welcome to GB Yoga with me, Maddie. Today, or this evening, whenever you're practicing, I got a nice flow, um, which I've titled and themed resistance. So we're gonna explore the word resistance and resistance in our practice as well. So yeah, hope you enjoy. So I want you to come down onto your back when you're ready. You can start with maybe closing the eyes, bringing one hand to your belly. And bring in one hand to your chest. Starting to lengthen the back of the neck, softening your shoulders, your chest. Soften the face, especially the eyes, the mouth, the jaw, allowing the tongue to drop away from the top of the mouth. And just simply starting to breathe. Adding that control to your breath as you inhale, filling your belly, filling your rib cage, filling your chest. As you exhale, allowing your chest, your rib cage, and your belly to fall. And continuing with that breath, starting to notice any resistance in your body. Any resistance in your breath any resistance in your thoughts. And asking yourself how often do you find yourself resisting something? One of the most puzzling paradoxes of the human organism is the way we resist not only life's difficulties, but also life's potential sweetness. We don't just resist something unpleasant, like maybe working with a difficult health issue or maybe giving your notice in work. But often we have a strange resistance to maybe getting a massage, putting it off and off and off and off. Or maybe you resist by fully opening up to a friend or partner or especially allowing on an emerging, emerging state of inner expansion even though these things can really bring us so much joy and can be so great for us. So today I want us all to move like water, taking the path of least resistance, being fluid, expansive and free. And of course, within your practice, I want you to modify everything that you need. So when you're ready to do so, hugging your knees into your chest. Just starting to rock forward and back until you begin to find enough momentum to come all the way up into seated. And you can either blink the eyes open or keep them closed. We're going to come straight into some cat and cow from here. So with our hands on the knees as we inhale, begin to lift and expand the heart, lift the chin. And then as you exhale, begin to round. And again, inhale. And exhale. And continuing back and forth between these two, but also adding your own little bit of fluidity to these movements. So maybe barrel rolling, maybe adding the head and bringing that into some rolls as well maybe hip rolls, whatever feels good. Just start to free up the tissue, let yourself become relaxed, not trying to move with rigidity, keeping it fluid and moving like water. It doesn't matter how silly it looks, it can look silly, it doesn't matter. No one else around you, so enjoy. So now when you're ready to do so, we're gonna make our way onto all fours and we're gonna continue that fluidity. So coming into quadruped on all fours as we inhale, lowering the belly, lift the heart, relax the shoulders, and exhale to round. And again, inhale. And exhale. Keep it going. Maybe start to add 
add your barrel rolls in again. Maybe some side bends. Just literally whatever feels good. There's no right or wrong here. But now we're gonna find some resistance. So as you inhale, coming back to a neutral spine and pelvis. So think nice, strong belly, rib cage and chest. Slightly draw your shoulder blades together. And we're going to lengthen our right leg back. We're going to firm up through the right glute, hug the belly and rib cage in still. So keep strong and stable through the abdomen. What we're going to do is lift and lower the right foot, not very high, just engaging the glute. And then you're going to load through the shoulders, lift the left leg so the knee comes in line with the right knee, squeeze the glute, left knee comes down, then right leg lifts, right leg comes down, left knee lifts. Now we're going to keep that alternating, right leg up and down, left knee up and down. So a good stability drill for the pelvis. What I don't want is any lifting of the hips, they stay in place. Maybe a few millimetres of course, but it's minimal, keep it going. Now the next time your right knee lifts, or your right leg lifts, we're gonna hold it there. I want you to drag the heel in towards you, flex in the foot so the toes are pulling down towards the knee. Squeeze through the glutes and lift the leg as high as you can and just start to pulse. Small movements, building that resistance you can feel, breathe into it, accept it. It's there, it's okay. Now keep the leg as high as you can, hold it in place, and see if you can start to lengthen the leg away. So we're keeping these hamstrings engaged here as well. Breathe. And then release the right knee down. Same on the left. If you need to shake out your wrists and shoulders, now please do. And coming back into quadruped, draw the shoulder blades together, hugging the belly in. We'll lengthen the left leg back. The toes stay on the floor for a moment, firm up through your left glute, the buttock, and then we'll lift the leg. Hug the belly in, keep it strong here. Now just start to drop the toes down, loading the left leg now, we'll lift the right knee up. Right knee comes down, left leg lifts. And keep that going. One lifts and lowers, then the other lifts and lowers. It's very controlled, it's not fast, we're not rushing here, take your time. Now the next time the left leg lifts, we'll hold it there, bend the knee, pull the heel in towards you, just start to pulse. So don't be tempted to drop right into the lower back, keep the belly switched on. Now keep the leg as high as you can, start to lengthen. It won't straighten completely, you want to keep that hamstring switched on, so still quite a bend in the leg, hold it. And then release. Again, shake up the arms, the shoulders, give the wrists a bit of a stretch here. So I'll draw the right fingertips back, let the shoulders drop. Now flip the right palm to be down, stretch the other side. And then shake out the right wrist. We use the right hand to draw the left fingertips back. Then flip the palm over for the other side. And then shake it out. We're bringing the hands back down. We're gonna tuck the toes underneath and we'll start to elevate the hips for our first downward dog. And just starting to pedal, straighten in one leg as you bend the other. Gripping the fingers into the mat, really elevating those hips. And again, we do freestyle here, find fluidity. There's some bits where I'll be offering that resistance, where it's kind of sticking between those two lines and there's places like here where you can really be creative and move however you need. Last couple breaths. And then softening both the knees, just start to walk your feet up to the hands and we'll take a forward fold. Hug your elbows, let the head drop. Kind of rest your belly onto your thighs. Gently sway it side to side. And 
then releasing the hands down, soften your knees further. And we'll just slowly begin to roll all the way up to standing. And as you lift the head, rolling your shoulders back and down. We'll just bring the hands into heart centre, bring your feet parallel. Keep the eyes closed if you're comfortable doing so. Think about really starting to root down through the feet, but finding length through the crown of the head. And just asking yourself a question if there's maybe any resistance in your life that you're working through at the moment. Maybe try and honour that today, become aware of it. Maybe realise you can't always resist, sometimes you have to soften. Just like water, it has that kind of strength to it, but it can also move fluidly into whatever container it has to. It can adapt, it can change. Now on your next inhale, opening the eyes, we'll reach the arms up. And as you exhale, send the hips back to fold. We'll set the right foot back, drop the knee and the top of the foot. And as you inhale, come all the way up. Actively drag that left foot in, squeeze the right glute and drive it forward. Think about those hip bones or the pelvic bones pulling up and the tailbone, not tucking under, but rooting down. We're just finding that length through the body and the shoulders relax, breathe. Then as you exhale, hands come down, we'll tuck the back toes underneath, lifting the knee, and we'll step back into plank. Find that plank, press back through the heels, spread all ten toes, press away from the floor, we'll then drop the knees, and as you exhale, slowly lower onto the belly, keeping the head of the arm bone lifted. Inhale, lift the chest, bring the chin down slightly, lengthen the neck. And then lower, tuck the toes, exhale for downward facing dog. Soften the knees, look to the hands, step your right foot through, drop the left knee down and the top of the foot. Inhale. Actively pull that right foot in, drive that left hip forward, but really strong through the pelvis, shoulders are relaxed. And then hands come down, step to the top of the mat to fold. Inhale. Exhale, send the hips back to fold. Left foot steps back, drop the knee, but keep the toes tucked. And as you inhale, come up. Keep the palms together if it's available to you, but continue to pull that right foot in. Drive the left hip forward, big inhale. And as you exhale, maybe go a little bit deeper. One more breath. Hands come down. Step back to plank, option to drop the knees or you can stay in your full plank as you exhale and lower, maybe hover. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale for downward facing dog. Soften the knees, look to the hands, left foot steps through, right knee drops down, but keep the toes tucked and press into those toes, release the base of the foot. Inhale, palms join, lengthen. And as you exhale, deepen, squeezing into the glutes still and still anchoring that left foot back, last breath. Exhale, hands come down and we'll step forward to fold. Inhale. Exhale, hands come into heart centre. Close the eyes. Breathe. Good, then flutter the eyes open. And as you inhale, lengthen the arms up. We'll take the left hand to the right wrist, lengthen the right arm up and we'll take it over to the left. Think about really opening into that right hand side, breathing then, really anchor down through the right foot. And as you inhale, come to centre, exhale, hinge back into the hips. So we're softening the knees, sending the hip back arms come down, right foot steps. Right hand stays to the floor, of course use a block if needed. And as you inhale, left arm is coming up. Now you're welcome to stay here, or maybe see if you can start to circle the arm. So bringing that left arm forward, down to the floor and open. You can make it smaller of course, depending on how much mobility you have at the shoulder. And if it's too uncomfortable, just leave the arm reaching up. A couple more breaths. Then as the hand comes down, we'll bring it onto the mat, squeeze the inner thighs together, and as you inhale, 
come all the way up. I want you to soften that back knee ever so slightly. Hug the belly and rib cage in. As you inhale, we're gonna bend the elbows, lift the heart, slightly take a back bend. And as you exhale, lengthen, get as long as you can. Inhale to open. Exhale to lengthen. And again, inhale. And exhale. And then inhale to open. We're going to leave the arms as they are, but reach forward, come onto the left leg, and see if you can lift the right. Firm up through your glutes, keep the elbows out to the sides, keeping that heart open, dropping that right hip, breathe. What can you feel here? What are the sensations? Is it the leg that's tough, the balance, the breath, or three? Last breath. And then step the right foot back or swivel to our right, toes out, heels in, hands to the hips, and just pulse. Coming into goddess, nice strong posture, knees driving out in the same direction as the toes, tailbone rooting down. Now get low and hold, bring the hands into heart centre again, feel that resistance building through the legs, breathe through it. And times get tough, take a breath. Inhale, lengthen the legs, turn to the front of the mat and step back into plank. Exhale, slowly lower down onto the belly. Again, cactus the arms or goalpost, and as you inhale, lift everything up. Draw the shoulder blades together, breathe. And then as you exhale, plant the hands, tuck the toes, the downward facing dog. And just walk your feet nice and wide, toes out, heels in. And begin to come back into this squat. Hips are about knee level, maybe a bit higher. Head is dropping to the floor, it's heavy, uncontrolled. We're on our fingertips. Sit back as much as you can into the hips. Final breath. And then look to the hands, lift the hips, and we'll walk our hands and feet to the top of the mat to fall. Soften the knees, inhale. This time, right hand grabs your left wrist. We'll lengthen the left arm up. Take it over to the right. Anchor down through your left foot. Send the breath into the side of the waist. Inhale to centre, exhale, send the hips back to fold. Left foot steps back, left hand stays down. Option to bring a block underneath the hand, remember, and then right arm is reaching up. And maybe you stay here, or maybe you can start to circle this right arm. Continue to hug the belly and rib cage in. Pick up into the side of the waist, you're not collapsing into your left shoulder. Breathe. Now the next time this arm comes down, leave it onto the floor. We're going to start to squeeze the inner thighs together. And as you inhale, come all the way up. Soften your right knee just slightly so it's not locked out. Tailbone roots down. As you inhale, open the chest, bend the elbows, lift the heart. And as you exhale, reach forward. Take this at your own pace. I'm not going to give you any cues for a moment. You can keep up with my rhythm. But find your own. Maybe you need to move faster, maybe slower. But don't rush. Now the next time you open and lift, pause. And then we'll start to lean into our right leg. Come onto the left big toe, maybe you stay there, maybe you can lift for a nice bent leg aeroplane, keeping that heart open. Then big step back with the left foot, turn to your left, toes out, heels in, hands to the hips, and that little pulse. So lengthening and loading our adductors as low as you can, and then hold, bring the hands into heart center, breathe. Feel what there is to feel, the sensations, you can come on very strong into these legs. Stay with it, 
it, last breath. And then lengthen the legs, turn to the front of the mat, step back to plank. And as you exhale, lower all the way onto the belly, cactus the arms. And as you inhale, lift everything, holding for three breaths. Final inhale. And then exhale to release. Plant the hands, tuck the toes, lift the hips for downward dog. Walk the feet nice and wide, toes out, heels in. We'll walk our hips back and into that funky squat, letting the head release as we come onto our fingertips. And we'll bring the left hand in underneath the shoulder. And as you inhale, reach your right arm up. Maybe taking the right arm to the lower back to twist open. And just let your head drop towards the floor. And then exhale. Right hand comes down, inhale, left arm reaches up to the ceiling or the sky, and then bring the hand to the lower back to open. And then exhale to release, elevate the hips, and we'll kind of high hip bear crawl to the top of the back to fold, inhale. Exhale, send the hips back to fold, lead into the hands, walk, step, or hop. Exhale and lower, maybe hold for Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale for Downward Facing Dog. Soften the knees, look to the hands, walk step or hop to the top. Inhale. Exhale, send the hips back to fold, lean into the hands, walk step or hop. Exhale and lower, maybe hover. Inhale. And exhale for Downward Dog. Soften the knees, look to the hands, walk, step, or hop. Inhale. Exhale, send the hips back to fold, lean into the hands. Find plank, exhale. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale for downward dog. Ooh, take a nice big inhale. And then open the mouth to let it all go. And again, big inhale. And exhale. Last breath. And then drop your knees down nice and wide. Untuck the toes, send the hips back to the heels. And lengthen your arms. And just using this pause to come back to your breath. Checking back in with the body. And just noticing how you're feeling in this moment. Coming back to the question I asked you at the beginning of practice with what are you resisting right now? In your life, in your practice, what is holding you back? What is stopping you move fluidly? And then when you're ready to do so, beginning to make your way up to downward facing dog. And then as you inhale, we'll lengthen the left leg up. Take a bend into the left knee and begin to stack the hips open. And squeeze into the glute, bringing that knee the highest point of your body. Now as you inhale, we'll bring the knee forward and we'll set it to the outside of the left hand and we'll drive the chest forward. And just take a moment here. And we'll release the right knee down. You might want to stay on the hands here if you have blocks or you have access to blocks, maybe using them to come down onto your elbows. If you have blocks or books, you can change the height of them depending on how you stack them. And of course, if you don't need the blocks, feel free to just drop down onto the forearms. You want to think of this stretch as not 100% effort, so you should be able to go deeper if I was to ask you to. The better you can relax here, the better you can breathe, the better you can soften, the better this pose will serve you. So don't push it. If you've gone really deep into it, maybe back out slightly and relax. Now 
now when you're ready, we're going to walk our hands forward as far away from you as you can. I want you to grip the ground, whether it's your mat or the floor beneath it. Grip with the fingers and imagine you're pulling it towards you. You'll feel that traction build through the body and really into the groin and maybe into the hip flexors as well. Keep it there. Pull those hands towards you. And then come back down onto forearms or to blocks or on your hands. Keep hugging the left knee in towards you and breathe. Then coming on to the hands. We're going to tuck our back toes underneath, lifting the knee. And I want you to pick up the left foot. You're going to drop the left knee to the wrist and you're going to send the right leg away for pigeon. So make any adjustments that you need to, depending on how tight, how tight your hips are, depending on how far away your foot is. But square off your chest, your shoulders, your hips, and then maybe coming down. So you can come onto your forearms or maybe using your hands as a pillow for the head or maybe lengthening the arms down entirely. Wherever you are, making sure that you can breathe making sure that you can soften and also relax. And coming back to those big, big nostril belly breaths. If you can't be through the nose, don't worry too much about it today. We're taking us into our rest and digest state, our parasympathetic nervous system. We live such stressful and busy lives that we don't always slow down to breathe. And then slowly making your way onto your hands. We'll pull our thumb, tucking the back toes underneath. And we're going to come straight back to downward dog. Maybe to all fours if you need to first. And just freestyle, wiggle out the hips, get some movement coming back into the body. And it's optional that if you wish to do so, maybe take in a vinyasa. If you have another variation of a vinyasa you like to take, then now is your time to give it a go. So when you're ready to do so, returning back to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha. And then as you inhale, begin to lengthen that right leg up. Take a bend into the right knee, drawing the heel in. Squeeze into the glute as you lift that knee up. Try and keep the chest square to the floor, the armpit square. Hug the belly and rib cage in. And then as you inhale, bringing that knee forward, we'll step the foot to the outside of the hand. And we're going to keep off that back knee in this high lizard, drive the chest forward, relax the shoulders. Come back to you if it feels good, but keep that heart open. Now releasing the left knee down, making sure you've got a good 90 degrees in this right leg. Maybe you stay on the hands again, utilize your blocks if you need to. No two sides can be the same. Of course, that's what we aim to get, that balance, but maybe one side you may need a block, one side you don't. And that is fine, but keep hugging that right knee in. And when you're ready to do so, we're gonna walk our hands forward. If you've got blocks, you can move them out the way. Grip the floor and pull it towards you. And feel that whole body light up. It's intense. Final breath. And then come back in onto your block, or elbows to the mat, or maybe staying on your hands. Your final few breaths here. And making your way onto the hands, starting to load your weight into them. We'll tuck the back toes underneath, lifting the knee. And now picking up that right foot, dropping the knee down to the wrist, sending the left leg away. So again, 
squaring off, getting comfortable here. If this isn't an option for you, take an alternate hip opener. We'll come onto your back and take a moment to rest. When you're ready, maybe coming onto forearms. Maybe using your hands or a block as a pillow, or maybe stretching all the way down. Again, wherever you are, make sure that you can relax. If it's mega intense, you're going to just be focusing on that intenseness. But I do want you to identify where you feel this. Where is the feedback? Where are the sensations? And try to imagine you're sending your breath there. Like every big inhale of oxygen you take gets sent directly to that region to relax, to soften, to refresh with oxygen and fresh blood. For these last couple of breaths, just finding that edge, sink into it. And then beginning to make your way up onto the hands. We'll tuck the back toes underneath and we'll make our way up to downward facing dog. Again, come onto all fours first if needed, shake everything out. When you're ready, making your way back to downward facing dog. And again, option to take a vinyasa, any variation. So the one I'm doing at the moment is a little bit different to what I usually teach. And then softening both the knees, give the head a good shake, nod the head up and down. And we can walk, step or hop. To the top of the mat. Inhale to come up and exhale, hands to heart centre. So we're going to take one final flow before we take Shavasana. So I want you to just take a moment to close the eyes, reconnect with the ground. We're going to come into some balance, so we need to have a really strong base, a really sturdy base. So I want you to focus when we are balancing, not on the leg you are lifting, but on the leg you are rooting through, because that is what is grounding you, that is what it's keeping you stable. So we're going to leave our hands at heart centre and just start to transfer your weight into your left leg. You can come onto your right big toe, maybe this is where you stay. So every progression I take, you're welcome to stay there or take it further. Maybe drawing the knee into the chest. So we have a few options from here. Option to stay, option to bring your left hand either to your knee or maybe hand to the left, no, to the right, sorry, big toe. And maybe if you are taking your hand to the toe, you can lengthen the leg away. And we also have the option, wherever you are, to bring your right arm behind you. Now, you don't want to think about your hand holding the leg in place. If you were to remove your hand, your leg should stay there. The quadriceps are working here, but we're also really squeezing into our left glute and our hamstring. One more breath. Now, if you have your hand to the toe, I want you to let go. Keep the arm in front of you. If your hand is on the knee, extend it in front. We'll begin to make our way into half moon. It's quite a tricky balance either way. So slowly bringing that left hand down. Now, you might want to bring your hand to the floor. You might want to hover. You might want to utilize a block and bring your hand to a block, as I'll demonstrate on this side. So think about the hips stacking, right hip on top of the left. You can gaze down to your left big toe, or maybe switch the gaze up to your right hand for a further challenge. One more breath. And when you're ready, we'll take a big step back with the right foot. And we're opening into warrior two, Vibhadrasana two. Bring one hand to your belly, one hand to the lower back. Hands are pulling in or smooshing towards one another. That front hand is pulling up. The hand on your lower back, just pressing the tailbone down. We can restretch the arms. We've got 10 breaths to play with here. So I'll start it by flipping the left palm up, reach forward and reverse your warrior. And then inhale to come up, exhale over. 
I want you to continue moving back and forth between these two positions, but in any way you see. So however you want to move, whether you alternate the arms, maybe straighten the legs here and there, find your own little flow. Playful, there's no right or wrong, it's all about enjoying. And then find a reverse warrior, just pause there. Give the left leg a straighten, come back into it, then inhale to come up, exhale into side angle or maybe extended side angle. And switching your gaze down to your left big toe, find that length through the body. Now as you exhale, right hand comes down, we're going to turn to the right, feet are parallel, we're going to take some lateral lunges, side to side. Now again I want you to freestyle, so I like to bring one hand to the opposite foot and twist, maybe pause. There's not much direction I'm giving you here other than send your hips back, not your knees forward. So we're hinging, hinging back, hinging back. Anything, you can stay low, you can stay upright, you can level change, free flow, enjoy it. Last couple breaths. And then turning to the front of the mat, plant the hands and just walk your left foot over to the left, hands underneath the shoulders, back into our lizard. Now we've got a few options. I want you to either stay here, or maybe you can see if you can bring your left hand to the back of the Achilles or to the heel cord. And see if you can work your left shoulder underneath the leg. Right hand is here to help us balance. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you can start to work into a bind. I'm gonna flip myself over here, working into the bind. You want to start to reach the left arm out to the side and wrap it to the outside of the left leg, come into the lower back. And if that feels stable, of course, drop the knee if needed. You can always bring your right hand to meet the left. Lifting the chest. Feel the resistance, breathe. You can always drop the knee, you can always drop the hands. Last three breaths. Now if you've taken the bind, slowly come out of it, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders. And when we're ready, we'll step to the top of the mat to forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, send the hips back to fold, lean into the hands, walk, step, or hop back to plank. Exhale and lower. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale for downward facing dog. Soften the knees, look to the hands, walk, step, or hop. Inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center. I'm just taking a nice big inhale in through the nose. And then out through the mouth. Once more, big inhale. And exhale. Now on your next inhale, just beginning to draw the left knee up. So maybe you stay here, hands on the other side, maybe hand to the knee, hand to the big toe. And if you open or stay as you are there, it's completely your call. Relax the shoulders, squeeze in through the belly, and breathe. You can always soften the standing leg. Again, focus on activating, get that glute switched on. You can give it a poke to help. And then slowly, releasing your hand and foot, or hand to the knee, reaching the right arm in front. We're going to start to send the left leg back. So maybe another variation, you can bring the big uh, toe down if needed. Then bring your right hand down and see if you can then lift the leg if you really struggled on the other side. Think about stacking that left hip on top of the right, still squeezing the glutes, nice strong belly. Maybe floating that right hand, two more breaths. And 
And we'll step the left foot back to open for warrior two. And straight away start to free flow. We've got around about 10 breaths. You can do anything at all. I do not mind. You can pause within one position over the other. It feels really delicious. Doing arm circles, literally anything. Free flow. Maybe you just want to hold warrior two. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Listen to your body. Free up, no resistance. Now the next time you come into side angle or a variation of it, I want you to pause. We'll bring our left hand down and as we do so, swivel to your left, come back into those lateral lunges. Again, freestyle. I like to keep my hips low here, really start to open into my groin. I also like to grab my ankles and twist through the upper body as well as the lower. And then when you're ready to do so, come into centre, coming onto the hands as you inhale, like a half lift, open the chest, and then exhale to fold. Maybe coming onto your hands, maybe elbows, maybe head to the floor. If you have headstand in your practice, or you can straddle up to forearm from here, so really nice entrance for your inversions. If it's really intense behind the knees, soften the knees, maybe walk the feet closer together and bend them a little bit more. But think about elevating your tailbone up to the ceiling, letting the head just drop. On your next inhale, lengthen to half lift. If you're in the inversion, take your time to get out of here. When you're ready, we'll all make our way to the front of the mat for lizard. So right foot is to the outside of the right hand, and we're driving forward. So pause there, lift and open the chest. Drop the back knee if you need to. Maybe starting to set up for that bind. So bringing your right hand to the back of the foot, to the ankles, where you come in from the inside, not the out. Maybe you stay there, maybe you can work the shoulder underneath. Maybe you can wrap the right arm to the lower back. Again, drop the knee here if you're just trying to figure it out for now. It'll take a lot of the strength and balance element out of it. And then maybe you can start to bring the left hand to meet the right, lengthen into that bind. Last breath. And then releasing the pose the way you came in. And we're going to step back to downward facing dog. And free everything up, wiggle the hips, find that fluidity. And then we're going to walk our feet halfway to the hands. We're going to drop the knee, keep the toes tucked and just sit back onto the heels if you can. If this is too much for the toes, leave the hands in front. It can be quite intense for some of us to kneel with our feet, our toes untucked. Just stretch out that plantar fascia. We can build a lot of resistance in them, especially if you do a lot of running, a lot of walking. Or if you wear very tight shoes, you can get a bit stuck. Now release the hands down, untuck the toes, and see if you can press into the arch of the feet and just lift the knees, and we're just countering that. And then release the knees down. We're gonna make our way onto our sit bones and straight down onto the back. We're going to lengthen your left leg and start to lift your right leg up to the ceiling. There's a few options. If you have a strap, you might want to use a strap over the foot. If not, and you can't grab your foot, interlace the hands behind the leg. Or if you can get a bit deeper, 
behind the calf. I'm gonna go hand and foot here though. Try and keep this neck like leg nice and lengthened, but don't lock the knee out. We're just starting to pull the leg towards us slightly. So you can again feel that resistance. You could be able to go deeper if I was to ask you to do so. And then when you're ready, we're gonna to start to open the leg out to the right. Now it's not about how far it goes out to the right. If you need to get deeper, just open slightly, but then pull the leg up towards you a little bit more. And then coming back to center. This time moving the foot just about 30 degrees over to the left. But it's not a very big movement. We're opening into the outer part of the hammies, into the side maybe of the calf and ankle. And you can also get a little bit deeper here by rolling the foot in. So the little toe turns up to the ceiling, big toe comes down. And again, to deepen, don't go further to the left with the leg, pull it up towards you to add that stretch. And then come back to center, bend the knee and release the leg all the way down. We'll come straight onto the other side. So draw the left leg in and lengthen in the foot up. Again, you can interlace behind the hammy, the thigh, the calf, or if you can grab the foot, you can take that option. Of course, if you've got a strap or something you can hook over the foot as an extension of your arm, please do so. And just begin to pull the leg in. Again, think of it as a 70% effort. So we go far as you can, back off slightly. And when you're ready, opening out to the left. Again, if you need to deepen, pull the foot closer up to you. And then coming back to centre before bringing the foot over to the right, maybe rolling the big toe down, the little toe up, or maybe pulling the leg closer in towards you. And then coming back to centre, softening the knee and finding your final resting pose, Shavasana, or an alternate posture if you're unable to lay flat. Hands, palms face up, toes falling away from the centre of the mat. Abdomen is disengaged, your lower back's not being pressed into your mat either. And just allowing there to be a heaviness in the back of the head onto the mat back of the shoulder blades, the glutes, backs of the legs, the heels, all merging down. Letting go of your breath. Letting go of your thoughts. Letting go of your body. And just notice any sensations present in the body in this moment. They might be different to the ones you noticed earlier. As we are now in total relaxation, we're not trying to hold a pose, we're not trying to control anything, just softening with every exhale. And if your mind begins to get noisy, if your mind starts talking to you, don't delve into it, don't explore that thought, just let it go, like a cloud, 
melting your gaze as you look up to the blue sky. And it's still there, but it's no longer your focus. And just using every exhale to allow your body to soften further, ensuring to soften the eyes and the area that surrounds them, soften the jaw, the mouth, the tongue, soften the shoulders, the chest, the area that surrounds your heart, soften the belly, the hip groin, the thighs, the shins, the tops of the feet, the toes, the bottom of the feet, the heel, the calf, the backs of the knees and thighs, the glutes, softening into your lower back, mid back, upper back, shoulder blades, shoulders, allowing the arms to become heavy, the elbows, the lower arm, the wrists, the hands, the fingers. Imagine when the hands are weighted down like there's a heavy ball or sandbag in them. And just sitting with the breath for a little while longer. If the mind wanders, just bring it back to the present moment as soon as you're aware. And just starting to deepen your breath. And just starting to bring some awareness back to your body. If you have no desire to move, feel free to stay as you are, but if not, maybe wiggling fingers, toes, wrists, ankles, maybe wiggling the head side to side. And in your own time, maybe stretching, maybe drawing the knees into the chest. And when you're ready, rolling onto your right hand side into a comfortable side laying position, maybe using your arms as a pillow. And just taking one final body scan while you are here. Just be 
beginning to make your way up into a comfortable seated or kneeling position. Just rooting down through your sit bones, growing tall through the crown of the head. And just bringing some gratitude into your mind, so something you are grateful for today or this week. It can be anything, an object, a scenario, a person. Food item, whatever it may be, I want you to go a bit deeper and also ask yourself why you are grateful for it. If it was your coffee, maybe it's because it made you smile in the morning or give you energy. But maybe go in a little bit deeper than that if you can. bring our hands into heart center and with that gratitude in mind taking a nice full deep big inhale holding it in at the peak and then open the mouth and let everything go just gently let the eyes open bring a little smile onto your face acknowledging the fact that you've taken some time out of your day to get back to yourself, your body, your breath, your mind, your spirit. Thank you all for practicing with me. I hope you have had an awesome day or have an awesome day tomorrow. Namaste.